know, I started hunting pretty hard in, in early to mid-October. We got a lot of good pictures of some good deer. But just leading up to this deer, put in a lot of hours. A lot of hours. So even when it came up to rifle season, when the getting is about as good as it can be, I was pretty wore down. I'd done some all-day sits already, trying to hunt the pre-rut, getting into the rut. I've done some all-day sits with my bow, and I just got whooped. One, one close encounter with a nice shooter, um, wide 10 point. I passed up a nice, it's probably a three-year-old, 125-inch deer. But of all the hours and all the sits, that's really all the encounters that I had. And knowing that you have a lot of pictures of a, a lot of nice deer, that gets frustrating. I did have another encounter, which plays into this story of this buck, where I sat in a stand that we called Buck Nest. This buck followed out a doe. It was late October. Um, but he, he would snort wheeze because I was grunting, and I did a little bit of a rattling sequence. And he snort wheezed all the way in, and it was just too dark. I mean, I had my camera rolling. There's just no way I could shoot, but um, that let me know that there was mature, really a mature deer in that area because it's way back in there. I brought up a canoe, I paddled up and down that freaking creek multiple times trying to sneak in on that deer with the perfect wind. Got in there quiet, and I just could never get it done. And so, leading up to rifle season, I set that set that creek crossing once or twice. Saw one year and a half old buck, and that was it. And just got freaking frustrated to be honest. The last couple days, I quit taking my camera. Didn't even take the GoPro. Just going because I need knew I needed to be out there. You play the wind and you get downwind to bedding areas and you do all day sits and you hunt pinch points and you do all the things you're supposed to do and it doesn't work out. You know, for one, you think you don't know what you're doing. For two, it, it, it just wears you out. So the reason I'm telling all this is because yesterday, as all those things were running through my head, I did, I did what I've been doing. I got downwind of a bedding area right on a creek. I thought... I'm gonna hunt all day, I'm gonna be right in here in the buck nest. So I walked all the way around, walked up the creek. I mean, it took me 45 minutes to get in there. I'm packing sticks, got my saddle, packing all my clothes for an all day sit. Popped up in a tree, sat a midday sit, for probably three hours. And then about two, 1.45 to two o'clock, I decided to cross the creek and really get in on this bedding area. I kept raking limbs, snapping limbs. I was raking the tree and I just did a short, three grunt sequence look over there in about 80 yards i see a rat coming through this 12 foot tall and that's not an exaggeration 12 foot tall brush as soon as he crossed the ditch and brought up his head i knew he was a shooter he's not real tall but i know he was way out past his ears and he was a mature deer probably four or five years old and i'm telling you what after the year i've had i knew i knew i was going to shoot him all right so we've officially become the pack out crew <laughs> This will be the fourth deer that goes in the back of the Tahoe for this year, uh, buck-wise. Buren gave me a phone call earlier, and on Snapchat, he's got a buck down. It is uh, about a mile from here right now, and we got a lot to work to get out. But uh, he said it's the big eight. Uh, shot him about 30 minutes ago, and he said he died right there. So we are headed in, and uh, we'll catch you whenever we get to the buck. This is really cool for Beer because he's been hurting his ass probably 20 of the last 30 days. He's literally been in the stand or hunting at some, some point. He just never gave up, so he sounded pretty pumped. <laughs> Look at that. That's where I was telling you I sat up the other day. So we hit this a couple of weeks ago and I was sitting up maybe 30 yards from here. And you could see these small bucks were working right here and bedding on this stuff right behind Luther. But it caught my attention when the sun came up. I was like, holy cow. 
And I started looking at it because there's a beaver sign up here. And we're looking, but you can see where they're running off this creek and working the side and they're bedding up here. But there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pretty good sized trees that are just mauled. Yeah. That's the old scrape from mm -hmm. three years ago. Yeah, The way this used to be, like this, this bank caves in because this water comes through so fast. You can see why the deer bed here, they got all the safety to their back or to the front. They can smell anything coming through this really tall CRP style, style field. Got all the native browse they need out there and they got corn over here. So it makes sense that he's down here. And there's a bunch of tracks and stuff back there, and I sat there from 12 to 2. Took the conference call. <laughs> them working. I think I'm gonna get closer to this bedding area. You can see some of my sticks up there. Yeah. Popped up in that little saddle and made a bunch of noise. I was like, I'm just gonna grunt. Let's get up here. Don't think it's but Yeah. So I kept snapping branches and grunted, and I saw him just like a stream come out of this. I'm like, you gotta be kidding. Me. <laughs> he was right there the whole time. Yeah, right there. I mean, just like that. That's awesome. All right. Sure. 15 yards. I'm like, ah, that's close enough. No kidding. Yeah, yeah he was about right there. Oh Ran my God. Shot him right in the throat. That's nuts. It was nuts, man. It was probably, I didn't expect to kill anything. I was just out here because I knew I needed to be. Yeah, he's that wide one. That's that wide one we've been watching on video. Yeah, he showed up on their comics like most frequent of all of them. It makes, makes, it, it makes sense, dude, that they're staying down here and they're going across the core. Well, we've been seeing them over there at night. Well, yeah. I'm like, He's got if to if they keep going over there at night, where are they staying where they'd be there? I'm like, mm -hmm. there's got to be one in here somewhere. Absolutely. That's awesome. If there's any neighbors, they probably think there's a crazy man back here. Because I was <laughs> hooping and hollering by myself. I don't care. <laughs> I freaking, well, you guys know. I've been hunting way too hard. You put your time in, you burn this one. Yeah. Got here at 2 o'clock and you know, I feel like a crazy person hunting all day, all the time. <laughs> Can't kill them from the couch. No. The couch sure sounded good today. I bet. <laughs> I can take that 1 o'clock off this call. Just Last until everything's 1.30 and kill this thing about 25 minutes later. Mm -hmm. Perfect.
I was climbing up that tree, the wind switched, and was blowing right down through here. I was dropping milkweed and just kind of dancing around. I'm like, man, I'm pretty much down with this business. It's stupid. I'm like, well, I'm already up here. Let's just start grunting. <laughs> Cape and Buren's deer out felt a little bump. <laughs> a little bump was what he killed it with. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Shoot him quartering too, so hard like that, where you gotta take that front shot right into the cavity. Usually it'll deflect one way or the other, but it'll catch in the hide. That's the second one we found like that, but that's only the second deer we've killed with that straight face into your shot, so. That's awesome. Shout out to Luther um, and our buddy Matt. You know, Luther, he's he's got that farm and he lets Matt and I just run rampant on that place and hunt. And, you know, to be honest, he'd rather probably see us kill big deer than, than him and it takes a kind of special kind of person. Anyway, that's the recap of this season. Maybe we can get some more luck late season when they chop some of that standing corn and we're probably gonna continue to get after him a little bit. So, until next time.